equal is not a medium in this case. So uh, you're using the wrong definition, which means you either didn't understand it in class or uh, I understand it in class. It's just the it's okay. just the uh, uh, the uh, amount of it's just the uh, the same definition. Okay, then I want an example of a medium that a speaker would use to deliver a message. Do you want me to type the question in the chat? Yeah. Okay. All right, there it is. Jeez. Uh, sorry about that. It's to memorize things. Sarish, I don't think you understand what a medium is. It's memorized so, speaking. It is not. Um, one of the things that that if you don't understand uh, is to just 
say, hey, Matthew, I don't, I don't understand. So sorry, Matthew, I don't understand. Okay. So I'm going to put this into the chat because I want you to read it out loud for us. Could you read that for us, please? A medium is the way in which a piece of writing is delivered. Email versus a mailed paper copy, for example. Genre and medium are both determined by audience and purpose. Okay, so the first part is the most important. A medium is the way in which the piece of writing is delivered. So, for example, um, writing could be delivered as a book. You've read books before, like Harry Potter. Yeah. It could also be an email. It could be a text message. Okay, can you think of another medium? Another way that you deliver information. Okay. I'm asking for another example of a medium, Sarge. What's another way? Another example of a medium? Yes. It's uh, They're both determined by audience. That, medium. No, it, it, Sarge, an example of a medium. For example, I said a book is an example of a medium. A text message or an email is an example of a medium. Could you give me your? Or wait example? a minute. What about what about uh what about a uh question? No, no, a question is not. I'm talking. It's the way the way writing is delivered. Think about the word speaker. How was this? How does a speaker deliver their message? How does a speaker deliver a message? Have you ever been to a presentation before? Yeah. Okay, how do they deliver the message? How could they deliver the message? They uh um they deliver the message through uh when you go to school and you go to the auditorium and there's a speaker, what do they do? They give out uh, their uh, presentation on what they present. Okay, and how do they do that? What they just uh, they just uh, show their they just they just show their presentation to everybody and then gives out the audience to people. Okay, so they use a they use like a PowerPoint presentation or a Canva presentation. Yep. And, and they speak. They give a speech. Yeah. Okay. Um, look at look at the. Uh, the, the triangle there where it says message and then down to the left corner corner audience what is the word on the side there between message and audience a tone a tone is like a i know what the tone is a tone is like a feeling a feeling from a person of their of the tone of, of a person um uh, yelling okay so that's that's what i'm asking for next give me one two examples of tone so you gave uh, me yelling, one. screaming. Okay. Let, let's be positive. Yelling's not uh, not necessarily a good one. Um, um, me being mean is tone. Tone. Uh, I'm sorry, mean? Mean. These are negative. Let's think of positives. What's a positive tone? A positive tone is like where you're... Uh, a positive tone is when, uh, like, if you're going into... Uh, um, uh, uh, into a bad way, like it, you're becoming like Sarge, uh, give frustrated. Me a positive, give me a positive tone. Your first ones were yelling, screaming, and mean. I don't. I, I'd like a positive one. Okay. So, um, okay. It's a uh, a positive tone is uh is uh talking softly. No. Go, if you need to go out to the internet and search for exactly what I'm asking you for, positive tone. Cheerful, joyful, playful, compassion. Pick one. Pick one. Compassion. Uh, okay. Well, uh, compassion's kind of sad. So let's let's go with either joyful or cheerful. Which one? Cheerful. All right, cheerful. All right. So I want you to give me an example now of when you would yell. Like, what's an example where? Go back to the triangle, please. On the presentation. Okay. Go back to the triangle, please, on the presentation. Okay, back to the triangle. 
Yes. So what kind of a message would you yell to the audience? What would you yell to the audience? Uh, yes. So I'm asking you for an example of when you might yell something. You might yell whenever the audience is too, whenever the audience is, um, is uh, crowded. Okay. Uh, that that is true. You're 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 talking more about an elevated voice. I'm talking about like forceful speech. Like why would you, when would you want to tell something really forceful? Okay. Can, you, can I can I be right back? Sure. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. Do you understand what I'm asking you for? Yeah. Uh, can you say it to me again? Yeah, what I'm asking you for, Sarish, is an example of when you would want to deliver a message by yelling to the audience. And 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 okay. what we're not what we're not talking about is is um, an elevated voice. We're talking about something that you would be forced forceful about what is something you would want to force the audience to do you want to force the audience to be uh to be paying attention okay Th think about a dangerous situation you should be uh, they have to just they have to just uh, remind you and warn you so give me an example of a dangerous situation that you may dangerous need situation to... like when something yeah. is uh, going on when something is uh, when something is going wrong. Okay, and I'm asking you to give me an example of that. Give me an example of a dangerous situation. Monsters. Okay, we don't, we don't have monsters, Sarish. Uh, give me an example of a dangerous situation. You were just driving this weekend, so maybe. The danger of the situation is keep your eyes on the road. Okay, so let's say you're looking at your phone while you're driving. Is that a dangerous situation? Yeah, it's dangerous. And your parent yells at you. Why would they yeah. yell? Mm -hmm. Why? Why would they yell in that situation? Because you should be able to be because that's not allowed because that's not you're supposed to do when you're driving. That's not what they you're supposed to do when you're driving. You have to have keep your eyes on the road because you can cause a crash. They have to be forceful. Okay. Yeah. They have to be forceful with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's talk about a cheerful message or to a, a message that you would deliver cheerfully. What is something that you would, you would deliver cheerfully to your audience? Okay. So wait, what are you saying again? Because of the storm, I cannot hear you because of the storm. I'm asking you, I'm asking you an example of a cheerful tone. What is something that is delivered cheerfully? When, for example, um, something's, uh, something's coming very, uh, no, something's going good, like, like a, uh, like a, a hero. Be, be more specific. You're, you're too general. 
Like, give me a, an example. It's of a like cheerful... when you're uh, when you're earning something, when you're rewarded with something uh, fan that with something uh, funful. Have you ever been in a cheerful situation? You just had a birthday. Yeah. Was that cheerful? It was cheerful. Okay. So what about it was cheerful? Uh, what it was cheerful is about me going to uh, watch Blue Beetle on Saturday. Okay. So can you for my, give me an because, that's, because that's for my birthday gift. So can you give me an example of how that was delivered? Maybe who delivered that information to you? All right, why don't we take a break, Sarah? So yeah, we I'll can see you at this. I'll take I'll see you at seven. Storm. I'll see you at seven thirty one. Okay. Seven thirty one. Yeah, or maybe it's not because it's storm, but
All right, Sarah, just let me know when you're back. We'll, uh, we're going to transition to some reading. All right. All right, Sarah, so I'm going to have you do some reading now. We're going to do kind of our SAT, ACT reading prep. So I've got a passage pulled up here. Uh, whenever you're ready, there you go. You should be able to see my screen. Whenever you're ready, if you want to uh, want to read that for us, please, I would appreciate that. Yeah, even then, my only friends were made of paper and ink. At school, I had learned to read and write long before the other children, where my school friends saw notches of ink on uncomprehensible uh, pages. I saw light streets and people. Words and the mystery of their hidden science fascinated me, and I saw in them with a key with which I could unlock a boundless world. A safe haven from that helm and those streets and those troubled days in which I even I could sense that only a limited fortune awaited me. All right, very good. So I want us to look at the first sentence there. And I want you to answer this question. What does it mean that their friends are made of paper and ink? What what do you think that means? They were very smarter than him. Nope. Uh, go ahead and read the second sentence. So sometimes the answer is. Of course, I learned to read and write long before the other children. So um, that, they were. Um, they were. Um, they were uh, here. They were here uh, late uh, while uh, while the other kid was here early. No. What What is made of paper and ink? Or what can you? We what know can you what do? is a made of paper and ink. Ink yep. comes from ink comes from a printer no, sorry, and sorry, sure, sorry, sure. ink does not come from a printer. Ink is used by a printer, but ink comes from other places. What do you use with ink? What does ink go? What is ink used for? And you kind of already mentioned it for a printer. What do you print? What do you print? You use that to print uh to print uh copied papers. Okay, what do you put on paper? What might you print on a piece um, of paper? Um, and you put paper, uh, you put, uh, something on paper, you can, you put uh, just um, some writing in there. Okay, what kind of writing? Um, well, like some, like some worksheet writing and also some bill writing. Okay, what, what is the most common thing that a printing press is used for? It's only used for um. It's only used for um. Uh, it's only used for whenever you print something very important. You get it from the printer. Uh, how about a book? Search a book. You a book. Print. Well, not a book, but you can use a other paper and you can use it to copy the same paper. Yeah. Okay. Um so the it says even then my only friends were made of paper and ink. So what the first sentence is saying is even then my only friends were What do you think that means if your friend is a book? If your friend has a book, then you can. That if your friend has a book, then um, people will read the book. Okay, what if uh, what if someone said, what if you wrote that, Sarah? She said, "My friends are video games." What does that mean? You use your them. Friend? You use them to play. You use them for playing. Okay, so the the 
the the video game or the book in this case represents the friend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any words here that you do not understand? I think I remember those words. All right. Then tell me what the word incomprehensible means. Okay. And I want you to, okay, so um, you're just going to the internet for that. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So when you, when I ask you if you, if you understand the word, that, that means you know how to do it without going to the internet. Okay. Not be able to be understood, not intelligible. Okay. So something that you don't understand. Yep. All right. How about the word fascinated? Do you know what that means? I know what fascinated is, yes. Okay, so without going to the internet then, tell me what fascinated means. Interesting. That's a synonym. Give me, I'm asking for a, a synonym is like another word for the same thing. I'm asking for definition. Fascinating means a genius, a genius who uh, is who is right. That is not correct. Why don't you go to the internet and look up the definition of fascinated? It's extremely interesting. Are you? Is that the full definition? Yes. Right. I'm going to look for it because I believe you're not giving me the full definition. All right. So uh, strongly attracted and interested or interesting. So part of it. Yeah. Okay. I want you to write a sentence with either the words incomprehensible or fascinated. So pick one. Okay, pick one and I want you to write a sentence for me, please. Okay.
All right. So appreciate you writing that sentence. That is uh, pretty good um, overall. So uh, appreciate you doing that. Let's keep reading here. Grab another section of this uh, this passage here, and we'll see if we can uh, see how far we can get on this. Yeah, we can get all the rest of this. Okay, I'm going to snip this in, and uh, we're going to continue reading. Here we go. All right, Sarah. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and read this uh, out loud for us, please. Sarah, do you understand what I'm asking you to do? Yes. Okay. Read. My father didn't like to see books in the house. There was something about them apart from the latter or the letters he could not uh, decipher that offended him. He used to tell me that as soon as I was 10, he would send me off to work and I better get rid of all my scattered brain uh, ideas. If I didn't want to end up a loser, a nobody, I used to hide my books under the mattress and wait for him to go out or fall asleep so that I could read. Once he caught me reading at night and flew into a rage, he tore the book from my hands and flung it out of the window. All right. So th this is the most important question is why doesn't his dad, why doesn't his dad like books? There's a couple of reasons in there, but don't pick any of them. Because he doesn't want um his son to read during the night when he's uh when he's asleep. That's kind of a that, that's that's not exactly the answer. Let's uh go and read the first three lines here again. My yeah, father, my father didn't, didn't, like like to, to, didn't like to see books in the house. There was something about them apart from the letters uh, he could not decipher that offended him. Okay, stop. So what is that last part? That offended because, him? Uh, that reading mean? books uh, ha uh, were offending him. That's right. So when you read, reading books offended him. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you already answered this one, I think, but I'll, I'll just write here. What did his dad do to the book? He, he tore he tore uh he reading. tore the pages yeah, from the books and flung it out of the window. Right. Why would he do that? Because it's making him get raged. Exactly. Good. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and stop here for today, Sarish. Good job. We're